what is translational medicine. It's bedside to bench and back to bedside type of medicine, where a clinician, physician investigator might see something in a group of patients that perks their curiosity. They're uniquely positioned to take that observation, take it back to the bench, and test some of the questions. Now, if you find a mechanism or an intervention that might make a difference at the laboratory bench, we're relatively uniquely positioned to then bring it back to the very patient population it might benefit. With my illness, somebody had to be, the, my doctor should be very much on top of the latest research. And I couldn't have asked for a better doctor than Dr. Anton, who is not only a wonderful clinician, but is also a first-rate researcher. The important part of research is not just the work itself, but it's actually mentorship and developing the next generation of young scientists. Dr. Yang and Dr. Anton have been wonderful mentors. Um, they're very supportive of, of anything that I want to do. Um, they're very supportive of, of pursuing different ideas and being very independent. They're, they're supportive in every way that they can be. I see so many successful people coming out of their you know, PhD, out of their postdoc, who can't get that funding and don't, and don't get positions. And that's really disheartening and kind of terrifying to me as a young scientist. I think being in Dr. Yang's lab has has been one of the largest factors in shaping what I want to do in the future. This nation's prosperity got built on two things, really educating the young and equipping them. And along the way, we stopped doing both. Part of educating the young is supporting their research. Paying for all this work is, is progressively becoming a huge challenge. We get grants from National Institutes of Health. Now, the circle there is you it's very competitive, so in order to get the grant, you almost have to have done two-thirds of the grant and completed it so your preliminary data is convincing, because the government appropriately wants to invest in a project that has a good chance of succeeding. So running a research operation at a university is something that is not, most of the public actually doesn't really understand. Professors doing med biomedical research at a university, we in fact have to fund all of our work ourselves. To have enough grants to run my laboratory, I am now spending most of my time writing grant applications. In the last five to ten years, the annual amount that Congress allocates to NIH and with the increasing some other crises, the dollars available to do this kind of basic and clinical translational research have been dropping. There are more and more people competing for a smaller pot making it far more difficult. The other thing that it's done is to actually make it much more difficult to take risks in research. So if you have limited money to put into research, you want to invest in what you would think is the more sure thing. You know, I, I, th I think the thing is that, that people are leaving science and, and it may become a bigger problem. Young investigators that start out and have trouble with funding don't always think it's worth it to continue because it's it's almost impossible to continue in some instances. I mean, even more senior investigators are running into situations where they can no longer sustain their research programs. So I think it's important to invest in the Gary Shandling Biomedical Future Fund because it's really an investment in research that down the road will have important implications for human health. Uh, he was really a deep thinker and a very innovative thinker. We talked a lot about the struggles of doing research and uh, how difficult it is to get funding. And so he always said to me, you know, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do something about that someday. I'm gonna take care of that someday. And I, I would just brush it off and say, well, yeah, yeah okay, yeah, we'll talk about it someday. But uh, so I was actually really shocked um, to find out that he had actually left a provision in his estate to support the research. And, uh, so I'm eternally grateful and really humbled by that. It's an investment, but it's also an obligation. It's, it's got to be done over and above without the financial justification that are immediate or 90 days to 90 days. Imagine what could be if the Biomedical Future Fund is successful, if they are able to execute, continue to execute what they're doing, and also, most importantly, bring up the rising stars behind them.